On there, folks. Good morning. It is the Earth Master back here on this Monday, unfortunately. Monday. Some people like Monday, but uh, Mondays are always, I don't know, looked at negativ negatively. Uh, but yeah, so far it's a good Monday. August 7th, 2023, about 10.56 a.m. here, California time. And the latest activity looks like a 1.0 there into Northern California. Uh, looking at the last 24 hours here on the globe. Uh, still seeing some movement up around the Java Trench areas. Let's go ahead and see what we got here for the largest quake in the last 24 hours. Looks like it's going to be an earthquake here around Japan from yesterday. That earthquake striking just on the northwestern edge here of the Filipino plate. We have seen some slight uptick here off the coast of Japan uh, overnight. Let's go back here to the uh, newest earthquakes. And as we zoom in here to this area, I see a handful of uh, fours kicking off here just off the coast of Tokyo, Japan. So slight uptick here across this region of the Pacific Ring of Fire. We'll continue to watch that maybe for some further movement. Kurokamachaka, one earthquake up here from yesterday. It's a 4.6, fairly deep. I think that is adding further strain here across the region of Japan, putting some further pressure here. Uh, but also at the same time building up uh, accumulated stress here over the Kurokam Chaka, the subduction zone that sits on that red line uh, for the next big earthquake. It's been a little while, so continue to watch that. We keep saying that daily, but it's just similar to California. When it goes, it's going to be a, a pretty big one. Let's see here, Alaska area, a couple smaller quakes. One earthquake here into the Aleutian Trench. That's a 3.6 coming in uh, within the last hour. 35 kilometers deep and a low activity here. Red circles indicating some movement around the Cook Inlet area. Mostly smaller microquake movement. Uh, across the states here, Canada or the um, Pacific Northwest, very minimal at best in that area. Uh, same for California. We're not really seeing any major swarming activity. Looking at the 2.5 map and above, shows two earthquakes from yesterday 3.3 near Tehachapi and a 2.7 in the Coso Junction area. That's around the Ridgecrest area, north of there, into the uh, volcanic um, areas, volcanic table and area. Uh, but aside from that, mostly smaller microquake across the region continues today. Uh, but again, no major swarm, no unusual activity to take note of there. Yellowstone National Park, little 0.5, very small uh, microquake. Let me bring up the Yellowstone overview here. Stand by for just a second. And uh, -doo, as far as earthquake activity goes, pretty much non-existent. This activity from yesterday is going to be some thunderstorm movement. Stirs up in the afternoon. I don't know if we've got thunderstorm activity occurring today. Up there, we'll check that out here in a minute. But we get this seismic signature that leaves that type of reading on the graphs but earthquake activity yeah maybe a handful of smaller ones that's going to be these well-defined spikes indicating some local very small seismic activity but aside from that things look uh, fairly calm there at yellowstone super volcano uh, texas oklahoma a little spotty activity out here throughout the the uh, day yesterday and today nothing major going on uh, regions of the middle america trench down here is still showing some activity fails. Uh, a couple fours there off the coast of uh, the El Salvador and the Nicaragua area. Ragua, there we go. It's been a while since I've st stumbled over that one. Um, looking on the Earthquake 3D globe here, it does show some smaller earthquake activity up and down the board. It's been pretty active. Uh, as far as the Gulf of uh, Fonseca there, I'm not seeing any major swarming taking place there uh since that activity lasts well it's been over a week now we had a pretty good swarm of activity there in the gulf of fonseca but now it looks like things are calming down puerto rico area a couple smaller quakes in the two and three range nothing major going on there uh south america not showing anything on the usgs map but uh the emsc globe here some smaller twos and threes uh, pancaking on the peru chile trench area some deeper quakes and some surface earthquake activity. Uh, cluster of quakes again around the Indonesia Islands area and up around the Philippines. Some threes southward here into this plate boundary. There's that 5.1 
kind of filling in that quiet zone. We didn't really see too much here off into the Andaman Sea within the last uh, 36 hours or so. But right after midnight, a 5.1 popped up here, 68 kilometers deep. So we will continue to watch that zone for some uh, further movement. Eastern Afghanistan, that's been our area of interest here recently. They've been having a, a pretty good swarm of activity over the last week, specifically around this area. At least uh, 14 to 15 earthquakes of various magnitudes there. Mostly deep earthquake activity here underneath the mountain region of um, eastern Afghanistan. Looks like the largest was a 5.8 here a couple days ago. Um, so I'm still not 100% certain if we're going to see anything bigger brewing up here or if this is just a, uh, uh, a release of various earthquake um, magnitudes here in the region. Definitely continue to watch that though with that swarming going on. And uh, Mediterranean area today in Turkey, some threes and fours going on across the area. One earthquake way up north. That's going to be, uh, let's see exactly where that's at. 3.4, way up there. Let's go to the world map. Let's see where this is at here in the purple circle. I'm guessing that the world, there we go, in Sweden. 3.4, 11 kilometers deep. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Got one earthquake down here in the South Sandwich Trench from yesterday. That's been a little elevated region of earthquake activity. But the Atlantic looks pretty calm and clear now. Not a whole lot of activity popping up here. Um, just kind of a moderate day today here of earthquake activity. Not seeing any strong earthquakes um did see a looks like a 4.2 coming in right now to new zealand uh the seismograph stations here are a little on the spotty side they'll work and then uh occasionally they won't work so let's see here i have a station right there in new zealand that's got to be that 4.2 right here let's go ahead and check it out here from the geonet servers as we see what's going on down there across the New Zealand area. I don't know, I may have to reset my router later today. Seems like things are uh, a little on the slow side for some reason. But other times, they're, it's super quick, so I don't know. 4.4, uh, 18 minutes ago, South Island area. Uh, see if anybody felt this. Looks like quite a few folks reported feeling this. Looks like the western side here of the South Island region. There's the epicenter of the earthquake activity, mostly light to weak shaking from this 4.4 occurring 38 kilometers deep. Uh, look at the earthquake drums here. There it is, showing up pretty nicely across uh, a good portion of them. Again, it's going to be on the closest stations here. Look like maybe around the uh, Quartz Range area, Nelson area possibly as well, but as you can see, a four-pointer is definitely going to show up pretty nicely across the park or across the uh, North Island and South Island New Zealand area. Uh, so just continue to watch that for some uh, some movement. I mean, we've seen some activity, right, taking place there in that region, uh, but I don't think we haven't. I don't think we've seen any. Let's go back here. Last 30 days, 2.5 and above for this area. If you look, it's very minimal very minimal uh and, and i'm not saying usgs is reporting all the quakes here geonet server is definitely showing the smaller quakes but we haven't really seen anything above the 4.5 threshold until 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 today so it looks like earlier today there was another 4.5 let me go back over there real quick and double check that if that's the case and we got two four pointers coming in Oh, there it is. I just didn't look far enough on the page. 4.4 earlier uh, this morning down off the tip of the South Island. And now we have a 4.4 a little bit further up north along the plate boundary. I'm thinking today might be a good day to watch things out there across New Zealand. So we're missing... Um, Well, this says, I man, sometimes the GeoNet servers and the uh, USGS, they uh, like to confuse things big time. 
Either way, it looks like there was some activity yesterday, 4.4, and um, some activity here just occurring within the last few minutes there. So we'll definitely continue to watch that. If you notice, that's kind of the quiet zone. It sits on a major plate boundary here, but there's not a whole lot going on within this area. So we'll keep an eye on that region. All right, moving on here uh, to, well, I think that's about it for earthquake activity. Another earthquake coming into the Aleutian Trench there, 3.6. Space weather activity, anything major going on here? Looks like a little bit of flaring coming up from these far side sunspots. That whole train of sunspots off the western limb there were growing as they were uh, getting ready to uh, venture off the visible disk here of the sun just never fails so a little bit of sea flare activity occurring there from that departing sunspot not a whole lot here across the sunspots of the earth facing side a look at the magnetogram image here there's that sunspot that's producing some sea flare activity uh these are just continuously um declining even more from yesterday notice that these regions are not complex whatsoever so after this area scoots off off the board here so to speak we're left with uh sunspots but that's about it no it doesn't look like any possibility of any strong flares or even moderate flares from the remaining sunspots on the visible disc right now still 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 55 x flare around 10 percent chance notice the proton event has disappeared from the polar regions and this effect here on the global delayer map is from the current C flare activity, which is sitting at a C 3.9. All right, Storm Prediction Center, kind of a big day out in areas of the eastern portion of the country. Um, yeah, something's going on with this, I don't know. So there is a moderate risk here for some severe weather with a elevated 10% chance tornado poss possibilities out here. That's a kind of a big deal, and it covers a wide area uh, around the D.C. region, uh, Alexandria, uh, Virginia area, as you can see right here in the yellow, covers at least four states, it looks like here. Not all of them, but uh, a good portion of them. Population density within that 10% is 14 million people. Uh, so you don't have to be, though, in the, in the yellow to get a strong tornado. This is just where the uh, maximum ingredients are to produce a strong damaging tornado uh, you can be here in the orange or the uh, kind of brownish color on my end or in the green so look at this wide area of population density be prepared out there today as these storms begin to fire up um, and keep your weather radio on all day until all this stuff passes later uh, also out here across eastern Colorado and western Kansas, 5% uh, chance for tornado possibilities as well. Uh, so along with the tornadoes, you got a dashed area here in the uh, pink, purple, kind of a mixture in between that, at least here on my end, with a, uh, yeah, that dashed area here is the significant severe potential for some damaging winds. We're talking about 10% or greater possibility of 65 mile per hour winds, straight line winds within this area, within roughly about 25 miles of a point. So the odds of seeing some damaging winds are quite high today within this zone. Uh, also, looks like some hail potential, 15% chance of seeing some hail, uh, at least an inch in diameter across the 15% zone here. A little bit higher, uh, as far as maybe two inch diameter hail out here in, in uh, Eastern Colorado and western kansas area but i think the big deal right now is going to be that tornado threat uh, that sits out there today so just a heads up be prepared um let's check out see if the weather's ramping up right now uh, on the lo local radar yeah my uh seems like my time to delay is way off right now i may have to restart the stream a little bit later reset all the equipment it's not hot nothing's getting hot in here it just seems slow don't have any major space weather events either so as you can see storms are brewing up right now um 
a lot of thunderstorms popping up. It is, uh, well, it's three hours out there ahead of my time. So early afternoon out there, things are getting, they're brewing up. So now's the time to definitely be, definitely be prepared and uh, watch the sky there for some uh, rotation and some uh, straight line winds out there. All right, folks, have a good day. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Uh, if I take the stream down, I will be uh, on the on the live stream here because it just seems a little on the, the choppy side, and it shouldn't be. I, I mean, USGS is really slow. Tremor map wants to work really quickly. I don't know why. Last night, this was the one running slow. So it might just be a uh, certain network traffic that's um, slowing down. Just a little weird. Everything looks fine now. All right. Uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Again, if the stream goes down, I'll let you guys know, and then I'll bring it right back after I reset everything. Have a good day. Stay weather aware out there. We'll catch you guys later.